welcome. Thank you all for coming. Happy 65th birthday. Any birthday party, you always invite family and friends, and I'm very pleased to note that we have um, actual family this time, so uh, please join me in welcoming Betty Carr, who is Holly Wilhelm's second cousin, Georgia Carr, Holly Wilhelm's third cousin, Betty's daughter, and Stephanie Petted, who is Holly's fourth cousin. So, um, <laughs> so I hinted in the, the uh, director's message last week that uh, the theme of the State of the Lab address would be change. There's just a huge amount of change been going on. Some of it we've created ourselves, some of it has been forced upon us from outside, um, but it's all been good. The excellence is up, professionalism is up, um, facilities are on the change too. Um, the, this auditorium is kind of the first step in some major facilities upgrades. We received funding for planning for a new sensitive instrument facility, and the budget for the Ames Lab is up. The budget will come close to, may actually reach $40 million in expenditures for this fiscal year. The most important point about our budget being up is that we are unique among all of the national labs. We're in really good shape. And that's really the, the product of the hard work of everybody in this room and all the others who didn't bother to show up because they're still hard at work anyway. I used to say, you know, the, the, la the mission of a, an Office of Science lab is to go out and do great science and win Nobel Prizes. Check that box. Um, thank you, Danny Schechtman. Um, the, uh, if Danny's prize had not come in this year, we would be bragging very much at the same level and with the same volume about Paul Canfield winning the Ernest Orlando Lawrence Award, um, Bill McCallum's RPE program, uh, Matt Kramer's uh, collaborations with other RPE programs are all um, massive uh, um, recognitions of the work going on at the lab. The uh, Ames Lab was described by the Chief Technology Officer of Mollycorp on camera as the, I think it was the world's leading lab for rare earth science. The lab has uh, seen a distinct uptick in the level of professionalism and it's been noticed not only here at the lab, um, but the people we deal with on the outside, especially DOE, have remarked that the lab is acting more as a professional organization, it's being uh, it's standing up and treating itself as a professional organization, not just a little mom and pop shop in, uh, in Iowa anymore. We are certainly going to have to step up the, uh, the capability of the lab to provide reporting on a much more frequent basis, on a much more detailed basis on some of these programs. Um, that's a function of um, DOE becoming more sensitive to demands from Capitol Hill about um, what the, the, the word accountability. Over the last year, I think we've had 10 announced retirements. That means uh, people telling us they're either going to retire immediately or that they are going to take some kind of deferred retirement option. Um, that represents a huge loss of experience. These are people who've been in the lab for a long time. We have to figure out how to deal with that, how to accommodate it. You do lose people from time to time. Uh, people don't always stay till they retire. It is a huge endorsement of the quality of the staff that we have when they get hired away. Um, and we take pride in that. And we'll train up the next people to be just as good in the director's office when, whenever we come to an anniversary, and this is the 65th, um, Bruce Harmon puts a, a, a new number on the door of his office, which is his age, which happens to coincide with the age of the lab. So Bruce reached 65 years old this year, and he told me a couple of weeks ago that he is going to take uh, a phased retirement program 
we've actually seen a number of staff promotions, um, uh, uh, particularly among staff scientists, and there's been a little bit of a log jam in that area for a while. I'm really pleased to see that we've got that system in place and um, people are, are being uh, considered for promotions, people are asking for promotions, people are striving to meet the um, requirements for promotions. That's great for the lab. If people are moving up through the various levels, um, that means that people are developing. It means that the lab staff are producing more, which is ultimately what we're here for. We produce science. If we keep doing it right, people get promoted. So on October 1st of 2012, we will have a formal lab-directed research and development program, which all around the um, National Lab Complex, it's known as LDRD. Um, Congress has uh, um, periodically uh, expressed concerns about LDRD programs and whether they actually work to the benefit of the, the US taxpayers, so there's a certain amount of reporting involved with these. We've seen um, the need to explain our science in much greater, with much greater clarity and in much less detail, which is the big challenge, right? New funding opportunities are coming our way every day, well, actually almost every 10 minutes. I check my email to see if the funding opportunity announcements have been, uh, have been released yet. We have uh, been kind of on tenterhooks waiting for the Energy Innovation Hub funding opportunity announcement to be made. Everywhere I go, in Washington, around all of the other national labs, universities, everywhere I go, I am told the same thing. Ames Lab is the front runner for winning this energy innovation hub. $20 million a year project on top of our roughly, nearly, hopefully, $40 million a year budget. That is going to make a huge, huge change. We are working very, very, very hard to make sure that we are the winner, not just the presumed winner. Looking a little closer to home, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, there have been a few changes at ISU. We've started off on a really strong footing with um, Steve Leith. Uh, we have a very strong relationship with Jonathan Wickett, who's going to be the next provost. I think we're going to continue to have a great relationship with our contractor, uh, which is, of course, ISU. So finally, uh, if any of you are perturbed by change, if you find change to be challenging or a uh, threatening thing, um, it's really not all bad. You've been living with it for the past year at an accelerating rate. Um, if you haven't noticed that you've been living with change, then either it's not as bad as you thought or you've had your head stuck firmly in the sand and you haven't been looking around at what's happening. Um, just look around you. The change that's been going on the, at the Ames Lab has been phenomenal and it's all been to the good of the lab. <laughs>